One cannot really talk about Sarah Monik's latest Blink 500 Pro X wireless mic system without first talking about the clear inspiration for the Blink 500 Rhodes Wireless Go series. So let's start there. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And before we get into it, full disclosure, today's video is sponsored by Sarah Monik. But as is always the case with this kind of video here at Three Blind Men and an Elephant, the company had no input to this video. They will see it only when it is published, now. And the views expressed herein are absolutely my own. With that out of the way, some context. Ever since Rode introduced their 2.4 gigahertz spread spectrum frequency hopping $400 prosumer Rodelink Filmmaker wireless mic kit back in 2015, which we bought and used with great success really from about 2016 to 2019, the race has been on to make this solo shooter friendly, you might say technology, smaller, more sophisticated, and more reliable. Rode itself has released two successors to the Filmmaker series. In 2019, they announced their single channel $200 Wireless Go. Quite extraordinary for its compact size, novel integration of a mic into the much smaller transmitter, color display, built-in rechargeable batteries, and a dramatically lower price compared to both their own filmmaker and the more pedigreed, admittedly more flexible, but not without its own challenges. They all have them, hold that thought. Sennheiser's XSW system. Later that year, Rode also introduced their Lavalier Go mic, which one could plug into the Go transmitter for greater concealability. In 2021, Rode announced their $300 Wireless Go 2, upgraded with a dual channel receiver, two transmitters as standard, onboard backup recording capability inside each of those transmitters, all without increasing the size of those transmitters or the receiver. Once again, Rode impressed with features and value, this upgraded two-channel kit coming in just about 20% less than a two-mic wireless Go original kit would have cost just the day before the Mark II was introduced. As with the original Go, the Go 2 was soon followed by the announcement of another lav mic, the Lavalier 2. This was a more interesting, better constructed, and more easily concealable lav than the original Lavalier Go. But Rode was not the only player in this segment. Of the many copycat systems to come to market since 2019, I think it's fair to say the most compelling competitor was released earlier this year when DJI announced their $329 dual channel wireless mic. We bought one immediately because it is even smaller than the Rode, arguably better built and better looking. It also allows onboard recording, but unlike the road, the receiver comes with a headphone jack. The transmitters and receivers fit neatly into a compact charging case, allowing one to charge all three with a single cable. This is important to me. Fewer cables and power bricks or adapters make me happy. And the DJI transmitter has a dedicated button, a separate LED indicator, and haptic feedback all to confirm when one initiates or ends onboard recording by the transmitter. The receiver even comes with a touchscreen. It's a very neat package. We eventually settled on the combination of the DJI kit plus a pair of the newer Lavalier 2 mics. For a little while, anyway. Hold that thought. So, now Saramonic has released their latest take on the Wireless Go 2, their second generation Blink 500, the Pro X series. It is available in single and dual channel configurations at $200 and $300 respectively. The bottom line? Well, one, the Saramonic system has a nice industrial design, seems as robust as the Rode, and beats both Rode and DJI on price because its kits come bundled with Saramonic's own lavalier mics. You'd have to pay at least $53 over the price of the dual channel Saramonic Pro XB2 for the wireless go to paired with Rode's basic lavalier go mics that B&H is currently selling as a bundle. You'd have to pay $150 more than the B2 kit for the DJI kit paired with a couple of Rode's better lavalier 2 mics. Two. But the Saramonic isn't simply a value play. It also offers 
incredible audio performance. The audio across all three are comparable, in fact, as are interference, rejection, and noise floor. Are there differences? Yes. Do they matter if you're not comparing them side by side for, say, a solo YouTube channel? Most of the time, no. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America, signed 1787. How quickly we forget. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America, signed 1787. How quickly we forget. In this regard, this use case, they are all fit for purpose. Hold that thought, too. Three, Saramonic beats Rode on functionality with A, a headphone jack on the receiver that the Rode doesn't have, which is especially important if your camera, say a Sony A6300, doesn't have a headphone jack, or was it the 6000? I don't recall. B, full displays on the receiver and transmitters. The wireless Go 2 has a screen display only on the receiver, same with the DJI, although both the Rode and DJI have indicator lights. C, more granular gain control available on the receiver or transmitter. Six levels versus three on the wireless Go 2, and then only from the receiver in the case of the Go. D, like DJI's wireless kit, a nice charging case that takes both transmitters and the receiver, but is not big enough to hold the mics. With this said, four, that charging case, that Saramonic charging case, is literally three times the size of the DJI case. Five, the Saramonic's mics are harder to conceal under clothing because the capsule is relatively large. Rhodes Lavalier Go has a much smaller capsule, and their Lavalier 2's capsule is not only smaller, but flatter. That helps. Six. Like Rode and the DJI, the Saramonic kit comes with dead cats that attach directly to the combination transmitter and work well in windy conditions. Unfortunately, the Saramonic sport the same futz-prone clip-in design as the original wireless Go, rather than the newer and much improved bayonet mount found on the Go 2 and on the DJI wireless kit. 7. Unlike Rode, Saramonic doesn't provide dead cats for their labs. 8. And... Most importantly, I guess I buried the lead. Unlike Rhodes and DJI's systems, the Blink 500 Pro X does not offer onboard backup recording. Now, this is a big deal in my book. Even if Rhodes' implementation of onboard recording requires using their Rhodes Central app, which introduces a whole new level of futzing. DJI's hardware-based implementation, as I just said moments ago, is much better. In either case, backup recording is a big deal because nine, the 2.4 gigahertz systems, including the Saramonic, don't offer a fraction of the interference rejection or real world distances of the RF big boys like Sony's $1,250 UWP D27 two person kit or a pair of Sennheiser's EW100 G4. Ten, none of these 2.4 gigahertz frequency hopping systems are remotely as robust, reliable, or performant as traditional RF either. I've had both the Rode and the DJI crap out in the middle of multi-person shoots when we were less than 10 feet away from the camera, facing the camera, from one dead audio channel in the Rode to a broken mounting clip on the DJI to an intermittent problem engaging onboard recording on the DJI. I mean, what good is backup recording? If you can't be confident, it's actually recording.
What good is a dual channel receiver if you have to gaffer tape it to your camera because of a broken shoe mount clip? To be fair, the clip on the Saramonic looks more robust than either of them. But since I'm not in the habit of trying to break things, I didn't try to find out with certainty. I should add that these prosumer wireless mics don't have the bottom end grunt of the big boys. I'm talking audio quality. And an unrelated but not an important note, while they all come with built-in rechargeable batteries, the Sony and Sennheiser RF units rely on simple get them anywhere double A's. And again, with USB-C ports on the Saramonic and the Rode for that matter and DJI, you can go all day long using any number of rechargeable power banks. So let's wrap it up this way. I think it's fair to say that Saramonic's latest Blink 500 Pro X series is a well-considered and executed, credible if notably larger alternative to Rode and DJI when looking for, say, your first wireless system. It performed roughly on par with both. And all three offer better sound and greater freedom of movement for on-screen talent than onboard mics on the one hand, less futzing and dramatically lower prices than traditional wireless RF mics on the other. But the Saramonic is also less expensive than its Rode and DJI peers because you will want to use lav mics with any of these systems, and it offers some things the Rode in particular does not. Even so, the Saramonic's price advantage may be a false economy if you find yourself in challenging circumstances since it doesn't offer onboard backup recording. Or you need to tie it as packly as possible. At the risk of being repetitive, I have to say that charging case is big. Frankly, so are the individual receivers and transmitters, relatively speaking. For these reasons, one could argue that the DJI system is the best of the three if you have the budget for it. But given my own issues with both the DJI and the road, especially around reliability, I'm not so sure. I'd need to spend significantly more time with all three systems to get a better gauge of reliability, though even then, this would only be one set of data points. So, for those of you out there who've worked with any of these systems, let me ask you, what has your experience been? I'd love to hear what you have to say down in the show notes below. Then again, I wouldn't recommend any of them, even with backup recording, if you are a workaday pro or, say, an occasional wedding videographer. The cost of getting the audio wrong or missing it altogether or futzing with gaffer tape, whatever, it's simply too high. In these cases, I'd suggest you look at something like Sony's $1,300 UWP D27 two-person dual channel system with mics, a pair of Sennheiser's $650 EW112P G4 with ME2 mics for the same $1,300, or if you remain intrigued, by the premise of automatic frequency hopping and don't anticipate much in the way of interference or distance. Maybe even do without a dedicated sound person, which is a big deal. You might take a close look at a pair of either Sennheiser's 750 buck AVX ME2 or 950 buck MKE2, most expensive options of all here at $1,500 and $1,900 a pair. They are the only pro-level frequency hopping systems I know of. They boast notably higher performance, better sound quality, and build quality than any other frequency hopping system. Are easier to use than traditional RF systems with less futzing. And throw in absolutely unique industrial design to boot. I like them very much. And for now, anyway, that is that.